guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody okay doctor how will you define post dated pregnancy so post dated pregnancy now is defined as uh, a pregnancy which is above 42 weeks of gestation which is calculated from the first day of the last menstrual period that is uh, what is called as uh, the post dated pregnancy according to acog and according to who classification okay and and doc, what is the latest acog terminology for term full term late term and post term pregnancy so uh, it was seen that uh, you know this is a very um, this term of 42 weeks plus post dated pregnancy that means a patient who, who comes to at, at 41 weeks of uh, gestation is also not post post dated so the management or the counseling changed in that direction a, a patient who's coming to us at 37 weeks of gestation a patient who's coming to us at 38 weeks of gestation a, a patient coming to us at 41 weeks of gestation though there's a lot of difference in you know uh, handling such a patient counseling this patient you know uh, problems with the uh, you know with the maturity with the status of uh, amniotic fluid with the level of so many things it changed and it, you know babies born at all these gestation gestations like at 37 weeks the one which uh, compared with 41 weeks they were all very different so uh, this broad you know uh, classification of just calling a a pregnancy post term only after 42 weeks was uh, would had to be kind of uh, ma uh, manipulated a little and that is why ACOG came up with this um, classification of uh, term uh, <clears throat> uh, in this thing um, term full term late term and then post dated pregnancy or post term pregnancy so in that case term pregnancy was uh, termed as 37 to 39 weeks of pregnancy term pregnancy then it was called then they came up with the terminology of term then to full term so that means 39 weeks to 41 weeks was called as full term now you know going beyond this can be dangerous then there was something which is called as late term now you're already late so that means 41 to 42 weeks is late late term and then 42 weeks above, which is post-term pregnancy. So this was the classification. Okay, doctor, can you enlist the causes of post-term pregnancy? Uh, <clears throat> though there are no actual, you cannot really club these uh, into any uh, particular etiological agent or something, but it's seen uh, that <clears throat> mostly wrong calculation of dates, you know, uh, usually uh, is an iatrogenic, uh, uh, let's say, uh, etiology of uh, post-term pregnancy. So it's very important that a patient, the first visit that she pays uh, to any gynecologist, it's very important that the, the dates have to be very, very important, confirmed from the patient. If she's got delayed periods, it has to be documented somewhere. The first ultrasound, which has, to, which is supposed to have the maximum uh, sensitivity as, as far as accuracy of the date is concerned, should be documented in the EDD. According to that ultrasound, should be documented in the papers. <coughs> and a note should be mentioned somewhere of uh, about this patient that either she doesn't remember her dates or she remembers them wrong or she has delayed periods which is why the calculation of uh, you know her expected date of delivery is uh, not in accord with the uh, uh, with the with the date which is coming according to the ultrasound or which is not uh, which it cannot be relied upon so mostly this is the etiological cause mostly that is the most important common iatrogenic or let's say just the most common cause of uh, post dated pregnancy that's number one then it's seen that obesity somehow is associated with uh, post dated pregnancy so patients who've got a you know a bmi which is more than 25 they're supposed to have a higher risk of going towards post term pregnancy for uh, reasons which are very difficult to describe then patients it's seen as a very rare uh, disorder which is excellent recessive disorder which is called as placental sulfatase deficiency these patients because of a reduced placental um, estrogen uh, synthesis it, that is why these probably have lesser receptors of um, you know oxytocin or prostaglandin because of which uh, these patients with uh, placental sulfatase deficiency usually go in for uh, post term pregnancy obviously we know that iron kefili is associated with post term pregnancy but Nowadays, because of the advent of uh, ultrasound, usually uh, and carefully is not allowed to go on till, um, you know, post term and uh, fetal adrenal hypoplasia. That is one condition in which, you know, patient can have post term pregnancy. These are few of the many uh, reasons or which are known reasons of post term pregnancy. Okay, doctor, what is the accuracy of various parameters in the ultrasound to date the gestational age in pregnancy? 
so uh, we say that first trimester ultrasound is the most sensitive in uh, uh, you know uh, kind of accurately giving the dating of the pregnancy and of the expected date of delivery so um, so much so that the first trimester ultrasound mostly relies upon the crown rump length so uh, during the first 7 weeks of gestation it says that it gives the accuracy the accuracy of expected date of delivery or the gestational current gestational age is just you know 5 days uh you know plus or 5 days minus accuracy uh, after you know 7 days to let's say 4 7 weeks to 14 weeks the accuracy is like one week that means 7 days 5 days and 7 days so mostly the first trimester ultrasound can still be relied upon this thing goes on to 7 days to 10 days in the second trimester ultrasound till around 22 weeks or so and over here the parameters that we depend, depend upon or rely upon is uh, uh by parietal diameter femur length abdominal circumference head circumference so these are four important parameters which are seen usually measured in the second trimester and uh, you know used for dating uh, the pregnancy and the accuracy in the second trimester right from 14 weeks to let's say 22 weeks or so is around 7 to 10 days after that from 22 weeks to 28 weeks it goes on to you know from 10 days to 14 days and after that that means especially after 28 weeks you know you cannot rely upon ultrasound because the gap the disparity is as high as 3 weeks so this is the length you know accuracy measurement of the different parameters in ultrasound okay doctor what are the physiological changes seen in prolonged pregnancy so what happens in prolonged pregnancy because of which uh, you know the uh, patient can uh, have or the, the baby can be at risk one very important physiological change that does take place and why do we don't want a uh, you know pregnancy to go prolonged is uh, the fact that amniotic fluid there's a lot of change in the amniotic fluid not just the fact that it reduces in volume that's very very important see it peaks somewhere around 36 to 37 weeks uh, some books it's given 36 to 38 weeks we can you can you can um, still mention that so amniotic fluid volume it reaches peak between 36 to 38 weeks after which there is a gradual decline so every week post 38 weeks the glycer is decreasing only it's not increasing definitely and uh, after 42 weeks the, the, there is sudden decline you know 33% on and more suddenly declines per week after 42 weeks of gestation that is number 1 not only does it decrease in quality quantity but it also thickens in viscosity because of the vernix caseosa so much on the on the body of the baby and the uh, liquor is decreasing the fetal weight is increasing so obviously now the uterus will be full of fetus okay so fetal movements and everything will also find very difficult to take place because of which the fetus suddenly decreases the movement or it starts moving less which is a cause of alarm to the to the female and also might be an actual genuine problem so that is one more uh, you know added problem so not only is the volume reduced but the density also increases so at this point in time if there is any addition of meconium into this amniotic fluid because of whatever fetal distress or so then it leads to real big uh, you know the respiratory complications in the baby that's one then the placental changes that that are taking place actually it's also a reverse kind of cycle uh, the placental changes also lead to this kind of uh, problem in the amniotic fluid so what exactly happens in the placenta so placenta beyond 38 weeks placenta starts showing infarcts and cal uh, calcification so it becomes mostly calcified uh, placenta and it becomes more necrotic the uh, uh, the arteries and all they show they start showing atherosclerotic changes when we do study the placenta the histopathology of placenta especially in cases of preeclampsia in iugr we see these kind of you know maturity or post maturity changes very early on in pregnancy that shows that placenta is actually one of the causative uh, you know um, um i should say um, tissues which is responsible for the pathological conditions happening to and around the baby so doppler changes amniotic fluid changes the you know uh, ctg changes they're all because of the nourishment that the placenta is providing that reduces with you know advancing complications like you know fibrotic changes or atherosclerotic changes and of course these calcifications which come with the maturity so the incidence of placental infarct significantly increases after 42 weeks of gestation which is why this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know importance 
of 42 weeks of gestation is very very important cannot be uh, um, under or overestimated because uh, that is the reason why we say it is post term pregnancy because suddenly the complications are increasing so basically the physiological changes which take place are there in placenta and because of that particular change in placenta there are changes in uh, you know the amniotic fluid as well obviously at this point in time the fetal weight is increasing the fetal size is increasing so because of which it becomes more and more difficult for the <clears throat> baby to survive in utero and even in during uh, you know during labor it becomes difficult for the baby to uh, you know uh, let's say take the stress of uh, labor because there is no cushioning effect around it and plus the placental supply of oxygen and nutrients is also suddenly reduced and because of which the stress of labor becomes very uh, dangerous to the baby in labor so these are certain physiological changes of prolonged or post term pregnancy